Welcome to this video regarding Blender camera calibration. So I have over here open a new scene. I will just enable the shortcuts so it will be easier to follow along and see the hotkeys that I use. Now we have the default camera which is this one and by default the camera is positioned over here so where we have the x and y axis the zero 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 point over there where we also have the cursor if i will press zero on the numpad i will see that the default camera is positioned like this if you want to change that we have the possibility to select the camera and move it by pressing g in order to grab it but as we can see it's quite hard to control it like this so even if i will press g afterwards maybe an axis such as z in order to move it up and down it's still a little bit harder to see exactly what we are framing over here so the best let's say option in order to see this is to use the camera view so to do that i'm gonna press n as we can see n will open this panel you can also click it over here, but I prefer to use the hotkey and I highly recommend that you do the same. Afterwards, we're gonna go to view and we're gonna have this camera to view. If I will check this mark, now if I will press zero to frame the camera, and if I will move the camera, so I will hold down the middle mouse button in order to rotate. And uh, let's say maybe I want this perspective if I will uncheck that and I will press zero again, I will see that the camera has moved over here. So initially the camera was positioned over here, but while we have the camera to view enable, the movement that we do within the viewport will be done to the camera and the camera will keep that last position where we moved. So now if I will press zero, I will see that the camera is positioned to the back and we will have this perspective. Now, if we want to have multiple cameras, we see that the camera has this green icon over here, which is also outlined with, uh, with a gray rectangle. I will add a new camera. So I will press Shift A. Afterwards, I will select the camera afterwards g for grab z for the axis and i will slightly move the camera at the top now if i would like to frame this newly added camera i see that it also has this green icon over here but i have to click that in order to make this the active camera and now if i will go to view and camera to view i will press zero in order to start the framing and now I will zoom out in order to better frame that cube. If you hold down the middle mouse button, you can rotate the camera alignment. And if you hold down shift and also the middle mouse button, you can pan the camera. So I will position this newly added camera over here so that the cube will be framed over here. And afterwards, I just have to uncheck the camera to view. And I will press zero to exit that camera framing and now we have the newly added camera 001 which is position over here and if i will press zero i will have that framing if i want the other camera i will just click it in order to enable it press zero and now i will see that framing of the initial camera okay to move along i will make use of an object so this will be the statue I use this in various uh, videos on my channel. My older viewers are familiar with this. So this is a statue of a hunter by 3D HD scan. I will also put the download link within the description of the video. So feel free to download and um, proceed with this along. Now, in order, I will import that model. I will go to file, import and the file format is like this so glb i have that already downloaded over here within downloads statue of a hunter and i will hit import and now we see that by default 
the object is not positioned in the middle. This is why I decided to make use of this 3D scan for the case study. If I will zoom out, I will see that the statue will be positioned all the way over here. Now, there are various workarounds in order to center this, so we can move the object to the cursor. But for this approach, I will show you this workflow. So the model has the axis over here, the axis system. I will expand the model, expand it again, until you will see the geometry that looks the same as the cube. So we need this triangle over here. Afterwards, you select that, you hold down the left click, and I will move this to the collection. That means that the object will be at the same level with our cube. And afterwards, if we are just going to delete the plane axis that were added along with the model, the object will move to the origin. So select this Sketchfab model, press delete, and we see that our object has been positioned to the origin. Now, the only problem is that the object is flipped. So in order to flip that back, we also have, uh, so after we deleted one level of axis, I will delete this one as well. So we only want the mesh of the object visible over here. And if you also want to enable the texture, we can do that at the top. We have viewport shading that we can click. It will take several seconds for the texture to load, but afterwards we're going to see our scene with uh, texture and also illuminated. Now, in order to rotate this model, since this was created using uh, photogrammetry, so multiple photos, and uh, the final model was aligned and stitched, we see that the object is not visible from the inside. So we are going to rotate this. I'm going to select the object, and we're going to go to the object properties over here, so the orange shape. And we are going to rotate this. If I will press R in order to have it rotated, I will also press X to only move it around the X axis. I'm going to see that the value needs to be minus 1 over here. Also, the rotation for the W, I will set it to 0 so that the object will be perfectly centered. Okay, now with this newly added model, we see that the, our initial camera framing is no longer working so if i will press with the first camera if i will press zero the framing will be like this so we have a close-up of the statue bottom and the second one as well but it will be on this other side so to change that i'm just gonna enable let's say the first camera and again using the same workflow that uh, we discussed previously. I'm going to click on camera to viewport. Afterwards, I will press zero. And now I will zoom out from that area. I will slightly rotate because I want, want to have this perspective with um, the two dogs and uh, the hunter. And uh, now we see that we have a problem. So the problem is that if I will zoom all the way to the back, the object will be clipped. And this is a problem regarding this lens camera. So if you have the camera selected over here in the object data properties, we see that we have a clip start. So that is the clipping plane where our object will be visible and not. And uh, this will be the end. And we see that over here within the end. So if I'm over here uh, with the mouse scroll, if I will slightly move it again, some of the elements will be clipped by that plane. We see that we have this distance of 100 meters. So I will uncheck that camera to, to view and I will move around. And let's see, our camera is positioned over here. I will also measure the distance between the object and the camera. If you are not familiar with the measure tool, this will also be, let's say, interesting. So we see that is the camera. This is the, the object. And we can go with the measure tool. And I will slightly consider that this is the, the area where the camera is. 
and if I will hold down the mouse I will see that we have 90 meters over here by default we have the grid within blender so each grid line over here will be the equivalent of 10 meters as we can see and as soon as our camera will be moved further away from the model more than 100 uh, meters our camera will be clipped and that's the reason why we won't see that okay so i will just delete those measurements now with the camera selected i can also go over here within the object properties and we see that on the y-axis our camera is at a distance of um, 88 meters we can also go within the object uh, data properties for the camera and we just need to increase this end value so there's not much else that uh, let's say other configurations that need to be done we just need to specify for the camera that the clipping end should be further in the back so in this case i can go and make this 500 meters and now if i will press zero i will see that the camera will frame this this view now i will just set camera to view and i will slightly move it and i will see that our object will only be clipped somewhere over here which is far away from the camera so we have that current framing on the camera we can uncheck that and now if i will press zero this will be the framing and if I want to see the final render of this camera, I can just press F12 and this will be that rendering. As we can see, we don't have any lights. So our initial light is quite small and in the middle of the statue, which is this one. So we have to move that outside. And now if I will press F12, I'm gonna see that there are some slight, uh, let's say, illumination from that point. So we have the possibility to increase the power of this, also to increase the, the radius of that. And now if I will press F12, we're gonna see that the visible radius has changed, but we don't have that custom, uh, let's say, distance for this. So I will slightly make this like 100 slightly increase again we see that the custom distance does not influence that power so since this is a point light if i will slightly increase this so go to 2000 if i will press f12 now we're gonna see we have a little bit more illumination over there if you were gonna go way further 10,000 what we're gonna see that now our illumination will be bigger in this area so that is how we can adjust the lighting within the scene but since this is a video regarding the camera i'm gonna go back to to the camera so if i will press zero this will be that camera framing with the camera selected within the object properties we can also change the type so we have the lens type we see over here it's set to perspective we can also go to orthographic and now if i'm gonna change the scale i can frame it like this but now the model will no longer be in perspective it will be in orthographic mode for the perspective view if we want to change we can change the focal length and afterwards we can also move our camera I will go like this press zero and um, move the camera around now we see that our focal length is 232 millimeters and if i will press f12 this will be the render as you can see everything is in framed but it will use a slightly different focal length if i will go to 50 it will be like this and i will need to go closer to to the subject now regarding the resolution of the final image we can adjust that by going over here into output properties it's currently set to full hd but if i want 
a higher resolution I can just type in the desired higher resolution so let's set it to 4k and now if I will press F12 I will see that the framing will be the same but now I have more resolution so that means that if I'm gonna zoom in over here maybe on the the statue clothing I'm gonna see that I have some details over here which if I will reduce the resolution so let's go to to something lower I will go to something like this so even though it's not the same aspect ratio or I can go to 1080 to be the same aspect ratio if I will press F12 now this will be the final image we see that since this resolution is lower than the full HD that I'm using on the desktop the render preview window will fit over here but if I will go all the way to that detail that detail will be generated only using a, a limited amount of pixels so we cannot really see that uh, that detail but we can go with a higher resolution over here let's go uh, more than uh, so I will multiply this by 2 multiply this by 2 as well so this will be similar to 8k now if I press F12 I'm gonna see how the rendering takes a little bit more time we can also slightly adjust those parameters but now if I'm gonna frame my camera to that object I'm gonna see that a lot of details are still maintain over here and we can go uh, as high as we want over here with the camera resolution so I can multiply this just as an example by five times more so this is this will be a huge resolution we see 38 by 22 if I will press F F12 it will take several uh, seconds in order to generate the final image for this but then we're gonna see that we will have a lot of pixels since the 3d scanning model used for the case study has uh, quite a lot of details as we can see within the sketch fab viewer we see that object over there and the final image should slowly process i hope that the resolution wasn't too high Let me just um, see what will be this resolution. So initially we had uh, I will bring in over here this megapixel calculator. So this is the previous resolution that we had and now I multiply this by 5. So we see that over here we can't use that multiplication by 5 but the resolution will be quite high so we see that blender is currently not responding it should slowly give us that final image but keep in mind if you're gonna add such a huge resolution like this one expect your computer to take a while to process that so this is quite a, a huge resolution let me show you how big is the final resolution in this case as we can see this will be 830 megapixels so this is quite a, a lot no wonder that um, is struggling and as you can see we have all these errors so report a texture limit so the limit size is uh, half of this Okay, so no problem I'll just cancel that and keep in mind that usually you may want to have some uh, decent resolutions so like 4k and this will process with the default settings quite uh, quite good okay so I hope you find this video useful if so, I will uh, leave a video with a similar topic over here to the right 
and a subscription button over here. So, thanks for watching. See you in the next video.